Hello and welcome to High Caliber TV, your source for figure and model updates every Wednesday and Friday. So today I've begun my build of the Tamiya 135th scale uh, M1A2 SEP Tusk 2. <clears throat> the Abrams with the fancy reactive armor all over it. And I've run into my first <laughs> real error, uh, personal error, mind you, nothing to do with the kit with armor modeling and it came when I attempted to attach this very very nice aftermarket all metal turned barrel from barrel shop into the kit part the mantlet and the breech block here so I had to hollow out all the internals where the injection barrel would fit there were some there was a block that allowed the barrel to have a precision fit and then when I applied the crazy glue to adhere this part into that, I fitted the barrel in incorrectly. And I assumed that I would have a few seconds to adjust and turn it, but of course it snapped shut forever <laughs> instantly and made a titanium-like bond with the plastic. So what I had to do was, as you can see, there are scars here. It it uh, it glued in somewhat like that and what I had to do was very very patiently carve away the mantlet and that allowed me to rotate the barrel and as you can see the main problem with the Abrams barrel in this instance is that it has this this bulge I think it's a gas mechanism correct me if I'm wrong on that but you have to have that, the, the fattest part of the bulge has to be on the 12 o'clock position. And so now I'm working to get that done. And this, the scarring, that's, um, that's just standard, filling it in, sanding it down, making it all smooth again. It's, it's a learning process. This is definitely a learning process. After consulting via our Facebook page, all of the uh, the tank, the armor modelers who I thought could give me hints, the best advice I got was to take it slow. And I thought I was doing that until, of course, this debacle. But it's fixed now, and now I get to move on to the next bit. Stick around. And we're back. So here I have the fixed gun barrel assembly with some extra bits added onto it. This thing's almost ready to go on to the hull of the turret but as you can see I've begun the filling process this is this hasn't been smoothed off yet so it's got a lot of imperfections on it and there's the bottom the area where the extra 50 is going on the barrel but I wanted to show the comparison of the barrel depot replacement which is the metal one and the kit part now the kit parts fantastic it's perfectly fine but there is just from where you can see, about probably 5% more barrel on the barrel depot replacement. And I'm not sure if that makes it more correct or less correct. Maybe it's just more gun on the tank, which is sort of cool. But yeah. A little bit more detail going down the muzzle there. Anyway. I just want to show that off and let you all know about the comparison. This isn't really a, a series about a review of the kit itself. That being said, so far I've absolutely loved working on this Tamiya kit. I haven't built many armor kits, so this is really a totally new area for me, new territory. One thing I'd like to note though, I was wary of getting ahead of myself and simply following the steps blindly. What I did here was I added the uh, the ring for the observation scope on before I added this bit of armor plate because there's a lip here that it really helps if you add this on after you add this, I found. As you can see right there. Because if you add this before this, then you can't get the ring underneath the plate there. Anyway, that's just one little piece that I've found so far. All the holes drilled out. So far, so good. I'm really enjoying this kit. 
Now on to the crew. Since I am waiting for the replacement tracks to come in the mail and the reflective surfaces for the periscopes to come, I've decided to shift all my progress onto the figures, the crew. And this is one of the kit parts, the, uh, the two crew in the turret from Tamiya. And they're fine, they're great figures, I, I suppose. Uh, but I've got a whole lot of replacements for them that are in resin. So I've already primed this fella, and I'm going to start my practice for the ACU on him, the digital camouflage on the American infantry. So we'll have more updates on that. Now just a quick look at some of the figures that I'm putting in. On the street level, I'm going to have this mini soldiers figure flanked or backed up by a uh, live resin operator. I believe this is live resin 002. He's the one with the with the the M4 with the grenade launching module under it. So that's cool. But then in the in the crew compartment, the copula, the cupola, whatever you want to call it, I have two old but still quite good hobby fan figures. Now, these guys are they're pretty they're pretty great actually really sharp detail we don't carry them unfortunately but we'd really like to so practice on on the Tamiya guy and then go on to working on the the crew in the cupola and then I'm gonna keep plugging away at the turret as quickly as I can but progress is unfortunately stymied because of the things I just realized that I still needed today or I don't need them, but of all the people, and thank you to all the people who've given me advice about armor modeling on Facebook, uh, they all say basically the same thing, that you need to replace the tracks. That's the one thing that they all unanimously said, was that the tracks need to be replaced. I heard the AFV Club workable tracks and the Bronco tracks were good replacements, and the ones that I found were the AFV Club ones, so those are what are coming in the mail. So... We'll have more progress in the next video. Thanks very much for watching. Check us out at highcaliberminiatures.com. I'll put the link in the description below. And I will see you next time. Bye.